Building with AI is about to get even easier for, well, everyone, developer or not. Today I'm going to share with you all the biggest updates from OpenAI's dev conference that literally happened yesterday or today as I'm filming this. I had another video planned and when I heard this news and was going through the conference, I was like, we gotta stop everything. We gotta film this. Hence why it's really dark in here because it's after work now and I, I'm, I'm committed to you. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. First off, before I get into these announcements, I wanna note something that I find very fascinating and I think we often forget, or at least I do anyways, which is it has been almost one year since OpenAI released ChatGPT to the public. Just soak that in for a second. Under a year, or just at one year, ChatGPT has been released to the public. Doesn't it feel like it's been so much longer than that? Since the release of ChatGPT, we have seen AI gain so much momentum, so many companies being built around it, and it has really taken off. It's wild to me to think that this has all been within the span of one year. Imagine this time next year. Where will we be at with AI? It's moving so quickly. All right, I just wanted to plant that seed in your mind as we start going through all the updates, as you really start thinking about how quickly these updates are going to not only be available, some which are actually available tonight, but also to where they are headed, especially with more people being able to build with GPT and a lot of times without any code required. All right, let's start with the biggest news, which is OpenAI wants you to be able to build your own GPT chatbot. Essentially, you can build your own version of ChatGPT. This could get pretty wild thinking of how creative people are and what they will come up with. Now, when I first heard this, my thought was, that's great for developers, but then what really got me was when I sat down and saw the demo for this, that it's really something anyone can start building with. I'll pull it up on screen here, a little clip of on their website that they are sharing with how you can build these chatbots essentially. So with this, you don't need to know how to program. You can give it plain English language instructions, upload some of your own knowledge. This could be in the form of PDFs, videos, or other files, and then direct the bot's purpose in a direction such as maybe it will be for creating images or searching the web. This can be very useful when you think of it used in your own study bot or your own virtual assistant, now you will be able to make that for yourself, custom to what exactly you want. Now, of course, with this, with everyone now being able to create their own essentially chatbot, now this is a quote that Sam Altman actually said, eventually you'll have your personalized GPTs that can call out to other GPTs. You'll be able to accomplish very complex things by bringing different services together. And I really like how that was worded because for me anyways, it gives me a full picture of how this will work. It'll be a lot of different GPTs doing very specific tasks all coming together, kind of for you technical folks out there, like microservices. That's how I think of it anyways. I mean, they're not microservices, but that's what my mind goes to, that kind of architecture. I might be totally wrong, we'll see how this plays out, but that's my thoughts around it. Now, on their website, when they are sharing about this announcement, there is an entire section dedicated to, we built GPTs with privacy and safety in mind. They're not releasing something to the public without taking this into consideration. I'm sure some of you, when listening to me share about this, as I, when I was reading about it, went, I can see the good in this, but I can see how this could go south very quickly. They've thought of it, they're taking care of it, or so they say. They've set up new systems to help review these GPTs against their usage policies, so it's not as though you can just go and create exactly whatever you want. There are systems in place similar to when you are using ChatGPT. Now, with so many more chatbots being released or uh, GPTs being released, the next big update that they had is a store is coming. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to see what others come up with for GPTs and I uh, start using them. I'll insert an image here. This is what the store is set to look like. So it's kind of like any other kind of product store, like an app store kind of thing where you can sift through. I like how they have different categories from Dolly, writing, programming. I just think there's gonna get some wild GPTs created, especially for the world of programming or data science that will help us so much, like help us really work more efficiently, faster. It's gonna be really wild. So they didn't share the pricing details, but the company will, this is really interesting, another big point to note. The company will share revenue with those who build the custom GPTs and eventually offer subscriptions to individual ones. This is a huge win. I think this is a really smart move on their part to really create ambassadors and champions by giving them back a percentage of these sales. I mean, it, it makes sense, but it's really, they saw that quickly and they acted on it. 
All right, getting back to more developer-related announcements, one of the new announcements they shared out as well is around the new large language model called GPT-4 Turbo. So it is capable of much larger, more complex prompts, and it's been optimized so it will actually cost less for developers to start using it, which I think is huge. You can see here on screen, GPT-4 Turbo. So it's one cent for a thousand input tokens and then three cents for a thousand output tokens. Another thing too is around developers being able to essentially create our own assistants now. So uh, creating these AI bots that can take actions instead of you having to do it. So giving them specific tasks to work on so you don't have to worry about it. And I think this could be, these will really be implemented in workflows, not necessarily immediately. I'm sure it'll be more for fun projects or small projects, but I can see big companies really latching onto this by having standardized systems in place with these bots to do certain tasks. I mean, it's a win-win. It's saving money, less human error, and the bots are doing all these repetitive tasks that we don't need to do anymore. All right, those were the biggest announcements at OpenAI's first developer conference. I have to say, I think it went down as a success. It seemed really well, really well received. Everything I'm reading online seems pretty positive about it. The biggest takeaway or the thing that I'm most excited for is definitely around being able to create your own GPT, uh, your own bots, and especially that you don't need to be this whiz coder programmer to do it. As a coder, I think it's great to be able to use those skills, but offering this to anyone that can code or not code will really help get everyone or allow everyone to be really creative with what they are building. And then the store is just like the cherry on top, being able to use these other GPTs, seeing what people create. I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Are you going to dive into these products, build with OpenAI's tools, or are you more thinking, I don't know about this, this could go south quickly? Leave in the comments your thoughts, and that was a very slow roll. I was expecting it to be much, much faster than that. I gotta go eat my dinner. Bye everyone. Oh, and hit that subscribe button. I filmed this like late in the evening for you. Bye everyone.